Hello viewers and welcome to a reboot of Let's Play Europa Universalis 4. Why a reboot? Because 1.4 and uh, Conquest of Paradise. As you can see here they added uh, some, well you can't see the new features, but you can see that they changed up what we see in North America a fair amount. Also the game rules have changed considerably. So my Benin playthrough, there would have been a couple problems with it, uh, namely there's been some reports of saves not translating the best between 1.3.2 uh, and 1.4 here. And uh, considering the new patch, new content, massive changes to the rules in the game, um, which I'll try to go over over time, but they, they completely altered the ability to say feed vassals uh, compared to the previous version, but they also brought down how much empires hate you for conquering. So, a lot of changes and uh, probably not entirely functional previous save, and it auto-updated while I was at work, so I didn't even have the option <laughs> to properly finish that under 1.3.2. So we're just going to start over, and I'm getting a new computer in maybe a week or two. So what I'm going to do is I am going to do this playthrough while I, while I am waiting. And I will finish it this time, I promise. It doesn't take that long. I'll probably finish this sometime over the weekend, and then we will move on. But there's another reason I wanted to do this. You'll notice I'm actually checking Iron Man mode this time. Yes, we are going to achievement farm a little bit. <laughs> that's always fun. But, um... Actually, I haven't done a whole lot of Iron Man yet, so this will be a new experience for me. No saving and reloading... Uh, a lot of that was just because I was learning the game, <laughs> and I uh, needed to do that because of it. <laughs> Chimu for the win and for the win. How about, let's play. Uh, will it take an apostrophe? Well, maybe it'll just save it as something else. <laughs> game broken already! No, and um, I have a feeling this game is going to get patched, and it might get patched solely because what I'm going to show here. And if that happens, it makes me smile. Did I pick Creek? I think I picked Creek. Okay, so they changed the native rules a lot. Not that I really explained the New World, but before the New World was just its own tech group, and nothing more. So you go over here to uh, the technology screen, you now see North American instead of New World. Technology cost 350% of normal, holy cow. But you'll also notice that you don't take any Monarch Point penalty. When I was in Sub-Saharan, and when you are in the regular New World tech group, you have a negative two Monarch point. That's what these guys here are. Uh, you lose two of them automatically from what your ruler generates every month. And here you can see how much I'm getting. You get a base of three plus whatever your ruler has. In this case, four, two, four. So you know, each of these numbers are three higher than that. And then depending on your tech group, if you're not one of the four best or in this new tech group, then you actually get some subtracted off of it for being in an inferior tech group, but not here. Oh no. So that's not too bad. And um, we have something unique to the Native American people called Native Ideas. The other nations don't have this tab. And the way this works is very much like the ideas I was showing here, where you pick from you know a nice generic set of very helpful things, potentially. But uh, the Natives have their own little mini set, essentially. Um, I can go, a lot of these mimic what you would get from other ideas, tax modifier, stability, cost, revolt risk, uh, and the, each of these final ones here, although you can take them in any order and that's important, each of these final ones makes you essentially have the same tech cost as the new, regular New World group, but without the Monarch Point penalty, so you are actually at a substantial advantage over the Aztecs, the Incans, uh, Chimu, Maya, and, uh, I forget the last one. So, that's something to bear in mind. Very important to the natives, however, is this. Yeah, you start with the ability to colonize after 500 diplomatic points. And that's what we're going to be fishing to do. And uh, I'm not going to pick a mission for a very important reason. Anyway, um, as the creek, we have a reasonable advantage here. Because we start with three territories, and a lot of the other guys don't. Cherokee does. And also taking a quick look at the um, force limits here. If I can find it, there we go. Yeah, lots of uh, new Native American tribes. But as the Creek, we start off with somewhat of an advantage, although Huron's a bit stronger than us. But you also get unique buildings with the Native American tribes. 
and they are excellent, but you lose them when you switch governments and then westernize, and you cannot westernize before switching governments. More on that later. But there is a couple very good things here. Um, perhaps most importantly, you have something that will boost your force limit by 10%, or by 10, and then another one that halves the cost of advisors. Very powerful. And you'll notice these are all very inexpensive as well. Um, I think I want to gamble a little. Maybe not too much, but we're going to gamble a little bit. <laughs> Even though it's Iron Man, who cares? So, we how much money are we raking in right now? So we can hire a Diplo advisor right out of the bat. And sure, why not? We'll take a Diplo rep advisor. Okay. <laughs> We will then build the building that reduces the cost of the um, advisors, and then after 10 months, basically less than a year, this will actually net a positive for me. Where is it? Here we go. Oh, it's an administrative thing anyway. Excellent. And because these have um, kind of brutal costs associated with them, you do want to be careful, but... Um, or not brutal cost, they, they go away. So you want to get something that is actually worth the investment. And at least the tax income ones, I feel, are. So, alright, that's good. And now we're just going to run at full speed for a bit. So, unless anything exciting happens, I'm just going to sit here. And, yeah, you know what? I'll accept some early alliances because you can break them later. So, alright, viewers. Um, you, you know the drill. You've seen this in the past. Um, the openings here. Unless I'm actually doing something, um, I'm not going to be recording it. I want to make this as seamless to watch as possible, explain new things as they come, explain interesting things as they come, but cut out most of the waiting time for you guys. And in the interest of that, I will be right back. Alright, we are back. I did unpause this. Yes, yes, good, good. Um... Basically all that happened in the interceding time was I had a peasant uprising here due to an event, and I put it down because there were two peasants. Shocking. Okay. So, we are at 500s for most things, and the most relevant one here that I really wanted to get to 500 was, unfortunately, the lowest one. But that's partially why I hired a Diplo advisor. Anyway. What to take? Well, I'm going to decide after this next month. Okay. So, obviously we want the colonists right away. We want to settle as much land as possible before the Europeans get here. So, take that first. Uh, I don't care. Even if this gets nerfed, um, this is what I'm about to do, you still want to take that first. In military, you want either morale of armies or leader shock. I think shock is really important in the early game, adding an extra pip. So we're going to throw that on. And then... What to take in need of administrative ideas. Build cost reduction is nice. Um, basically, you're going to need all of these eventually. Because you need all of them to reform your government. An argument can be made for only taking, say, the 100% one, the, the minus 100% tech cost, and rushing to administrative four. But I don't like that, because you can game the system. When you reform your government, it automatically pulls you close to the uh, western nation that's near you. It pulls you close to their tech level. So there's not much incentive to rush, unless you really want to get an extra colonist early. But it takes a long time before you can get one. And my idea with this particular start is to have already sealed off the, um, the coast by then. So, here's the deal. I'm going to break the game, viewers. How many of you remember my uh, Let's Play Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen uh, Let's Play? Well, for those of you who do, uh, you're in for a treat if you enjoyed it. Because this is going to be a comparable level of abuse as rushing everything with your opinion leader. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, are, we are scumming into the filth of the most broken things imaginable. And I love it. <laughs> so, okay, this guy isn't my vassal, by the way. And 
they did their best, the developers did, to prevent you from feeding vassals. Or they, they vastly nerfed it, at least. And what I mean by feeding vassals is, okay, you get a vassal, and then you sell it provinces so that it can spend the administrative power to core a province rather than you. And this particular colony abuse was also around in the last patch. And But um, now, if you try to sell it to somebody who has like various personalities, I think you can see it if you mouse over the correct thing. Yeah, personality balanced, for example. There's militaristic, administrative, diplomatic, balanced, and like colonial. And most of them, with the exception of militaristic, they will don't want to take provinces. They will not take provinces you know, once they are your subject. However, pretty much anyone will buy provinces if they are independent. We are going to be taking advantage of this. Uh, we are going to be taking brutal, completely nonsensical advantage of this, in fact, by selling these guys provinces. Now, normally you wouldn't want to just give an AI who's hostile towards you to provinces, but we're not giving them any provinces. Okay, we're going to do it this way, because this is getting annoying. Yeah. We don't want to give the just any provinces. We want to give them colonies. Now, the way colonies work is when you... Uh, each colony you make has a colonial maintenance factor. And in fact, since I have it here, I'll pause and show it. Two colonial maintenance. This increases exponentially for the number of colonies you have. Now, keep that in mind, because it's important. <laughs> yes, our friend here is going to have exponential colony costs, but... They do not yet have, uh, they have not yet run themselves into bankruptcy, and I think they accept provinces even if they have done so. Um, so you might be able to see where this is going already. Essentially, this is going to do two things to our friendly, uh, rivalry loving neighbor. Oh, I need to, um, send another colonist. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to bankrupt the heck out of him. And, uh, and that means that it, he will have no military. And the second thing that that will cause is, um, yeah, the, it, when you go bankrupt, it flattens your army's morale. Like, you have almost no morale. You fight so poorly. You have no manpower recovery. Um, anything that's a mercenary gets disbanded, but this AI has already uh, disbanded all its units. And, yeah. The other thing is that because I guess the game wanted to prevent a different kind of abuse, basically nailing an AI's colonies and screwing it over, uh, colonies aren't worth much war score. In fact, they're worth almost none. So even though this guy is much, much larger than me, because I'm handing him a ton of colonies, um, it's not going to matter because none of these have any war score associated with them yet. You know, I guess it's based on base tax or whatever, but yeah, so... We are literally uh, just handing a bunch of colonies that are going that is going to throw our hostile neighbor is effectively into strike, <laughs> and there's really not a whole lot they're going to be able to do about it after they buy these provinces. Now, there's a couple of reasons that this is particularly strong. I would not recommend this in most other areas of the world, but for natives, it's very strong. Your your settlers not as good as you would get from the ideas later. So these colonies take a little bit longer, although it's still not that bad. But the other thing is, you actually don't need a colonist at these colonies for them to grow. They grow very slowly, but they grow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, over time, they will get bigger. Now, this has yet another double purpose. And that is that, um... Normally, like, say I want to fabricate a claim, so that I have a claim on Cherokee's province. What is this? Natives cannot fabricate claims. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, that was a bit of an eyebrow raiser when I decided to play a native. So you're not allowed to declare wars. You're not allowed to get claims on enemy provinces normally. Now, if you are a one province native nation, you can, and you're adjacent to another one province native nation, you get an auto, you get an automatic CB um, reason for a war to declare on them and show your strength. And it'll give you some piddling amount of monarch points if you get a 100% war score. You'll get like 20 in each category. But and then you have to wait for the truce to expire. You also get some monarch points when you migrate from one province to the next. Additionally, if you vassal somebody who is a migrator and they migrate, it cancels your annexation 
and so you basically can't vassal them. Gifting the computer provinces like this get, makes them a multi-province nation, so they cannot, and I mean cannot migrate any longer. It bankrupts them, so they have no military. And finally, it gives you a very interesting mission. Yes, you can get CVs from missions, such as um, <laughs> Save the Creek People in, uh, yeah, Kataba. And where is that? That's one of the colonies I just gave them. This one is as it happens. I don't know why my screen gets dark when I zoom in either. Maybe it's a Linux quirk, or maybe it's some setting I need to fix. I don't know. Regardless, check this. Oh look, we have a Conquest CB that you're not supposed to get as a native. <laughs> oh baby. And who do we have it on? An opponent with nothing. Yeah, perfect. So they're allied to these guys who can't reach me, and I have an ally, so you know. In fact, are they allied to anybody else? No, so I don't even need to call in my ally on this, nor do I want to, because they might <laughs> occupy the provinces instead of me. So as soon as the game will let me, we're going to go in on these guys. Yeah. Yep, we have a conquest CV with the natives very early in the game. Now I just need to be careful not to walk onto land with natives, because we all saw what happened with that in the Ben and Let's Play. So those of you saying the vassal feeding is dead, <laughs> no, no, vassal feeding is not completely dead. And there are actually other ways to, oh, are they going in anyway? There are other ways to vassal feed, and you have the right personality, you can still do it just like you always did. So there's actually, uh, <laughs> oh, whoops, <laughs> they've gone bankrupt. So there's actually uh, still some flexibility, but they certainly made it harder to feed vassals in when conquest. The other thing is, if you conquer somebody who is more than a 50% difference behind you in tech group, such as, say, the western tech group conquering an Indian province, you can't vassal them. It turns into a protectorate instead, which you can never annex. So bear that in mind. Okay, so I'm also going to build buildings. I wanted to rush to get to Diplo before Diplo Tech before building it, but the diplomatic reputation plus three sweat lodge, worth it, <laughs> as it speeds up the rate at which you annex a vassal. And um, increasing land force limits could also be useful, so I think we will invest in that. Uh, most of the native civs will have that as well, so we want to have it. Um, the other ones, not as important. I built them before, but knowing that they disappear later, I'm just not going to do it. So yeah, this is, um, this is about as abusive as you can possibly get in the game. This AI will routinely go bankrupt, and will be able to do nothing with these colonies. And strangely, won't abandon them. And now some of them might die, because, um, you know, they, they are being thrown on natives. The yeah, another amusing thing is that the AI gets a bonus, so that it will not, uh, it has a lower chance of being attacked than uh, if I were to colonize it myself. And we are taking advantage of a number of things in tandem to completely break the expansion. This is the second day the expansion's been out, by the way. Um, I found this within maybe an hour or two of playing, but then I expressly look for the most abusive tactics when I play a game as a matter of course. So why not? Ah, uh, so joyous. So joyous. And of course, he still has to give me his tax income, what there is of it. The only problem here is that um, it's going to be a little while before I can repeat this process further. For example, and this is this does cap your rate at which you can expand. Basically, because you have a colonist, you don't have anything... That doesn't mean you have colonial range. I don't have any colonial range whatsoever. So it would be difficult um, for me to like settle up here anytime soon. You know, basically you start with 60 range, which lets you reach adjacent provinces only. I might leave Florida for the Europeans to settle so I can uh, improve my tech situation later. Because otherwise it might be difficult to get a province adjacent to them. I might not. It depends. But certainly I can't colonize it now. In fact, I can't send a colony anywhere now. And man, my people are taking a while to siege here. And, oh yeah, and the other thing I did in the interceding time is, uh, these guys offered an alliance to me. 
and um, these guys offered an alliance to me, although I think, yeah, they declared on me honoring their alliance um, with uh, Choctaw there, but they can't reach me because of this. They, they don't like going through this gray area a whole lot, so, you know, whatever. <laughs> I can largely ignore them. And no one else is allied, so good. Good and good. Okay, so we're going to look at the war score. And as you can see, the um, those colonies are not giving them a whole lot. Oops, we wouldn't actually organize by, yeah, top to bottom. And so I don't have enough war score yet, but as soon as I occupy the other province, it'll shoot up to either 100% or almost 100%, and then I'll have plenty of war score. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you are bankrupt, my good friend. Okay, so it gives you full. Perfect. What? How am I pulling money when you're bankrupt? Well, I, I'm not going to complain. You, um... No, I don't care if they uh, annul their treaties at this point. So. We are going to unpause and continue. Oh no, we, we failed our mission, viewers. Oh no. I, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't rescue the Creek people in that province as a result of this war. Whoops. Whoops. Yeah, you lose five prestige from that, but I, I actually gained prestige. And so now one of my missions is to incorporate them, and I'm probably going to need to do that to make any significant headway. But you need to wait ten years. So, I don't know if I want to take on Cherokee in the interceding time. Ew. I guess I have to lose stability. I'm going to kill about force limits a lot, so I'll take the morale, I guess. Even though that costs me stability. But that's okay, I have religious unity and um, the default native government type. It gives you uh, land maintenance modifier of negative 50% and a negative on stability cost. So, good shape overall. We are now sitting on a vassal who is chain colonizing for us. But, uh, once again, we have a waiting game. The, the only thing I could do, maybe, is take on Cherokee. And, let's see here. It's a little dicey. And, plus, if I do that, I lose out on someone to feed more provinces. And for that reason alone, I might not want to do it. Because Cherokee could realistically be given at least, um, a couple provinces along the coast here and help seal off the coast. My hope is that um, with port access, I can actually chain out adjacent provinces and seal off the entire coastal board here. That would be nice. It would also really, really break the game. So I'll be back when something useful happens. I think for the time being, I'm just going to improve relations with people that I intend to vassal in the future so that it's a little bit more seamless when I do go to vassal them, because I really don't have anything else useful to do right now. I can't fabricate claims or anything else, so we're just going to stick with improving relations for now, because I'm going to need to, you know, I'm going to need to annex my vassals eventually. Alright, viewers, I will once again be back, uh, perhaps when I begin annexing these guys. I don't want to annex them too quickly, because the, um, I'll have to pay the maintenance on their colonies, and I'm perfectly happy to let them do it. But okay, I will see you back. Alright viewers, we have a problem here, and so I am back. And welcome back. So, okay. One thing that occurred to me is that I actually pumped up my first vassal a little large. You don't want them too much bigger than you because um, it takes forever to annex them then, and uh, time is of the essence here. So a couple things happened. First of all, these guys, who were technically my enemy for a brief period, I believe, um, yeah, they were. They, I re-allied them and brought them, well, they stayed in my federation. So I, um, I decided to bring them back into the alliance, and we're going to go after Cherokee. And as we are federation leaders... Can I see that somewhere? Federation of Creek, Shawnee, and Pauton. Oh, that's me. Okay. So, do they have a federation? 
No, they are going to get rolled, because Federations give you a 30% morale boost. And in the interceding time, I have also picked up um, Warrior Societies for a 10% morale boost to my army global. In addition to the Leader Shock, so I have the two direct military combat boosters. And I grab the Diplo Rep, that'll just help me annex more quickly. And I don't have anything new here yet, but because I am hurting for money a little bit, I will probably grab the land tax modifier first as my next thing. So, okay. I think he's at full... I I'm just going to have to declare without a CB because I can't get one. <laughs> there's not a whole lot to say here. There's, there's no CBs to be had. But, um, at least last I checked, my allies would be willing to declare, so I'm going to declare, and well, most of them anyway, and then call to arms. But we are going to do that on the first of the month, because morale ticks up at the end of every month, and if he has no morale to start, I'm just going to charge. I need to hack with it. So, okay, how do you tell if an ally will come to war with you? It's right here. Chickasaw is allied with them, so they're probably not going to help me. Which is a not ideal thing, but I'm at full maintenance, right? Yeah, okay. Have been for a while. They're allied with... Um, basically, they are allied with these guys, these guys, and these guys. I hope they stay out of it, but um, if they don't, well, it's going to be a little interesting is all I have to say. That's for sure. Likelihood of joining a war... Oh, but I can bring in Shawnee. So I would just have to form up with my two allies that are north of Cherokee and risk my uh, primary location. Let's go! No! Stability drop! Okay. So did these guys join? I already called to one of the active wars. Okay. Wait. What? Who joined? already called to one of the active wars. And the answer to this is... Okay, they already joined. Good. Wait, what? Oh, of course. <laughs> They're still bankrupt. So, these guys are actually running away from my current position initially. And, unfortunately, yes, the other computers joined with my opponents. So I'm actually going to sit tight and try to bait a war. The other thing I want to do, and my leader's not that good anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead and make my general... Oh wow, I got a good one. Yeah, I'm going to make my leader ruler a general so I can save on the costs for that. Oh, now he's coming in on me. That just sounds wrong. Okay, so... We're going to go with the three-day bait. It is a three-day bait, right? Yeah, okay. Although the um, computer running to me might have made him change his mind. Maybe not. We'll try it. We'll try it. And we have a new idea. Yeah, I, I think out of all these things, the, um, the tax boost is where it's at. How's their prestige? Less than mine. Okay. And I actually have some military tradition for my first war. It's not going to be much, but it's more than they have. Yeah, it's, it's decent on the morale. It's 5%. But the real advantage is that I'm a Federation leader, and they are not. So, um, they can suck one. And, okay, no, they're not... Oh, they're actually going to try and form up. Can I intercept that? Maybe. Okay. And now they are instead sieging. That's interesting. I probably don't want to um, vassal those guys right off the bat, though. Whoa. Okay, so they're going to attack me again. On June the 1st. Getting close. Okay, I'm actually going to run down now. This should be fine. And yeah, the Tribal Federation leader morale bonus is kind of gross, as you're seeing. Like, their morale is really iffy compared to mine. 
<laughs> so this is actually not going to be that challenging of a war. Oh my gosh, and my allies jumped in on it. So yeah, now we're just going to, well, do I want to chase them? I think so. My morale is so much higher. Or I can just get into chain battles. Okay. Uh, that might shatter retreat me. Even though I, I don't know. No, surprisingly, it's a close battle. Despite the consecutive stuff. And, um... I'm actually going to consolidate my regiments here so that they're fighting full strength. And we're just going to give chase. Attack with it. At least catch someone. Yeah, there we go. I caught someone with Shattered Retreat. Perfect. And I think I still have my allies sitting on top of where my location is. Oh yeah, but that 11 is indicative of that already. See, I really don't want to attack when they actually have morale. <laughs> and I wouldn't mind uh, the Shawnee at least coming to defend themselves. That wouldn't hurt either. But on the bright side, my war target is letting me siege him and is not sieging me. So I should be fine. And the, uh, at least the Shawnee are preventing them from forming up. And they were going to Cherokee on October 30th. What? Oh my gosh. They're cutting through the natives? Don't cut through the natives. Who does that? Well, at least my numbers have recovered a little bit. And the Shawnee are off. No, you know what? We're going with everything. I, I want to take advantage of this and kill their units. If possible. Maybe. <laughs> Please. Unfortunately, they got a morale tick in the uh, interceding time. You, I attacked into higher numbers. Where are they getting these numbers? No! Well, that's not good. Uh, you'd think I'd learn my lesson, but it always feels like I forget. Never attack early game. And on top of that, like I felt like I had to because uh, my ally went in, but that's wrong. I didn't have to, and I shouldn't have. And now I'm paying for it rather dearly. Hmm. Let's keep recruiting. Did my uh, AI get stack wiped? It really bugs me that the computer's stuff consolidated while mine did not. It's kind of questionable. Damn, they just keep spamming units too. This looks pretty bad. So, uh, what do you want for peace? <laughs> I concede defeat. Oh, that's not gonna cut it. Do they have any other allies? Oh uh, no, I can't do that because it'll reset the vassal, the annex vassal timer. So we're gonna try and uh, scum a siege here with little alternative. Go defend. Not sure where that is. I don't think that's my province, though. Okay, they're going back off. 
Oh, I see. They're fighting there. Well, it's not over yet. It's just probably over. Probably. They are just kind of sitting there. Ooh. I think I'd rather have the stability. It's harder to come by that. Yay, enemy peasants. You siege that province, and I'll siege the other provinces, and we'll all be happy together. Come on, break it down. Assaulting this would not end well, just so you know. <laughs> I think I showed that when I attacked it with Benin. <laughs> it's a similar outcome would occur again. If their walls are down, it's more feasible, but it's still iffy. Oh, and our alliances with the enemy. Okay. So, I basically have until these things are more closer to being finished. So I'm not on as tight of a timer as I was thinking, because... Yeah, uh, that's going to take a little while. And the AI is dividing its forces. Getting a nice carpet going, yes, but... Oh, you know what I could do? In fact, this is my best chance. I'm actually going to stop sieging that and race him home. We are going to fish for separate peace and try to turn the tides of this war best we can because this looks awful that's Cherokee no well I guess I had to I don't want to fight my vassals peasants but yes this should make them a nervous at least Chickasaw does Cadu have yeah, they have units. In fact, they have seven regiments there. Nothing would turn the tides of this war like me winning this race on this uh, province. But suddenly, seven units are going to switch sides. This is basically going to be a seven on seven with the possible defender advantage to me. And it would make a big difference in this war. And who else with me? These guys who are getting sieged to death. That's really my only way out of this war that I see. Is just to, to, to grab a vassal. And, and work with that. I didn't want them as a vassal. But... Shani accepted peace. I can't say that surprises me really. I know there's um... Cherokee actually has more forces there. Ha! LOL. That's alright though, I can break them up a little at least. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't hurt to grab Chickasaw either, but I can't really afford to split much. They're taking some attrition, at least. Man, their siege is going faster. I'm in trouble. These guys might get annexed. Actually, who's sieging them? Yeah, Cherokee might annex them outright. I wonder if that would make their war score unmanageable. No, not really. Greek War of Aggression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Come on, Kadu, you need more units. And not to come home. No, I'm not taking peace. Screw you guys. <laughs> oh no! I can't let them 100% me. That's the only thing. 
Why is this taking so long? It's a fortification level of one. Yeah, I guess I have some more exhaustion. Still, it shouldn't be that significant. Oh man, this is gonna be tight. See, I'm hoping if I can get peace off of this, then... Yeah. Oh. Oh no, they didn't annex. Although that weakens me a little. Not much. Ooh, I wonder if I can negotiate separate peace. Like, say, with you. Let us bury the hatchet. What do you want for peace? Not even close. Okay. What? They reset the siege timer? Why would you do that? Hmm. I really need this siege to happen. This is getting kind of stupid. No! Do not carpet me. And don't come in and uh, attack me when I need you to stay with the enemy regiments. Oh, this is getting kind of dicey. Come on, man. No. Must not give up. Never give up. Never surrender. Ah. Right in the middle of the war, separate fees. Give me give me money. I need money. If I get them off one of my provinces, I can hire mercenaries. Yes. <laughs> Whoa, what happened? <laughs> Alright, let's form up! It's interesting, the AI, uh, AI got a little antsy there. Now, which is their capital? Right there. Let's scare him a little. I just can't have them, um... Oh, here we go. Oh, they're, um, they're not fearing me now. Oh, but if I get them off the province... But that's attacking over a river. There we go, they're going for uh, Alabama. Can I, uh, get down here please? Move off! Move off! Move off! Whatever. Go in! <laughs> the other guy's off to the side. Hurry up! Take him out! Quickly! Quickly! Yes! <laughs> we are not out of this yet. <laughs> it's time for the magic men from nowhere. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and let the mercenaries recruit. Man, I don't want to lose diplomatic power. Just take the prestige head, I guess. It'll make me slightly worse in combat. But we are going all in on success here. No choice. Yeah, I have revolt risk on top of it all. 
Okay, we are taking attrition. It is time to make use of some of our forces. Let's kick the Cherokee out of the way here. Nah, they're not gonna make it. And even if they do, I'm only getting a minus one river penalty. Come on. Let's get them out of there. Hurry up! Thank you. No. None of that. Get lost. <laughs> you thought I was dead, didn't you, viewers? I thought I was dead, too. As <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah, you want peace now. You want a different peace than you wanted a moment ago, I bet. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. I'm not gonna get shattered or retreat by like three guys, am I? Come on now. I oh, know they ran off. It wasn't a shattered retreat though, it was just a retreat. But we gotta kill this army, we can't let them escape. Man, is he running like shock four? No. Okay. Well, that's that at least. Actually, no. We are literally going to go one army wonder here and um, carpet them with that, even if it's insufficient. And the reason is to simply block them building anything else at all and we're gonna go uh, finish the job over there cuz who's left in this war oh they are too but they're kinda of broken I have this right. Yeah, get them out of there. So now we're just gonna try and keep everyone under wraps. Only one of these guys seems to have insufficient supply. Do I have a loan? No, okay, I'm still holding up on that. We are not the most uh, financially stable country in the world, but we are still okay for the moment. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for taking separate peace. Jerks. At least I have a little bit of help here from my allies. So who is not sieging properly? Oh, just there, the Mr. Point Seven. That's all right. All 100% Chickasaw there. I actually did not want Cadu as a vassal because I don't think they'll accept provinces from me. But I can just release them and then declare on them again and vassal them. That's fine. I'll take a stab hit on it, but considering how badly this could have gone, um, <laughs> the fact that I still have an advisor active and the fact that I'm actually going to win this war somehow is good enough for me. Because I have a hard time believing that I actually finished this and didn't lose. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm making gains now. I don't care if you have a... Actually, they would still offer me a peace favorable to them because I have a negative 30% war score. And they have provinces of mine occupied. Actually, you go help up there, because it seems like I can siege out of their province just fine with one. Yeah, sometimes you only need one to siege a province. Sometimes you need more than that. In fact, I might not get a 100% war score unless I can retake my own province, so... And maybe even vassal provinces. I'm not sure how that equates. 
I think most of them will be in bad enough shape though if I have 100% their provinces that they will at least accept a vassal deal. Oh, you entered a military alliance with Cherokee, huh? I don't think that's going to matter, my friend. Okay, now we have uh, working sieges on all provinces that I have um, troops. And I'm actually going to stroll these guys down here to try and break that siege as well. Might as well, there's nothing else to do. And yeah, I think this is a bug or something. The uh, natives uprise on nothing and just kind of stand there. Not too sure about that one. Hey, I'm making money! Cool. I guess um, I was losing money because my troops were reinforcing. Okay, Cherokee Peasants. That's actually a bit annoying. Ooh, that's their capital. Can I get a peace deal here? No, I don't want to offer tri tribute. Yes. Good, I might be able to deal with their stupid peasants. Or I might be able to out-siege their peasants, I don't know. But let's form up so that I can at least stand a chance. Yeah, peasants aren't going to beat a 7-stack or a 5-stack. In fact, I should be able to crush them pretty easily. I just need to get my forces back together here. I don't want to really base race them though, there's no reason. Oh, I should probably leave someone on this province, though. I messed that up. It's going to reset the timer. Oh, yeah, four of you guys, and that's going to reset the timer, too. I think I'll be fine, though, if I get their last province. 100% of their provinces is a big deal. Yeah, peasants have crummy morale, and they don't really fight that effectively. So I should win this. Oh, and also if you break their morale, they just disappear. There's no, like, peasants running. So even though I'm in kind of a weak spot here, I'm alright. I'm holding up. <laughs> so, how long until I can annex you? I suppose it doesn't really matter because they're still in the process of building up those colonies for me. Oh, that's right, I wanted to annex Cherokee, not vassal them. And do I have too many relations? No, because the people who were allied decided to jump in on Cherokee's side because I was the aggressor. So, instead of allies, they are now my vassals. <laughs> yeah! Come on, get the, get the last provinces here. Oh, if I want full annexation, I better, um, I better actually take back all the provinces. That way I have a 100% war score. There you go. So I just need these sieges to complete, and I got this. Yeah, no matter how much you've had your face handed to you, if they have no army, at the end of the war and you have all their provinces occupied then you get a 100% war score so basically I will get a 100% war score if I unseed the current provinces that are taken oh I can also probably get these guys out of the war now because they are merely negotiating for themselves and they will take a white piece despite my bad war score against them Ah, there it is. I'm almost 100% now. Um, between administrative power and diplomatic power, which do I want more? Let's pause a minute and look what I still need. Negative stab cost, lowered revolt risk, better relations over time would be useful. Um. Oh, I guess it just took it. No, I'm not calling for peace. Finish the siege. Maybe that far off. Maybe it can be. Hmm. 
No. I don't care how bad my war weariness is. Wait, what's this? High war exhaustion. Let's see here. It's under this tab. Oh yeah, it's over half per half of the, what it can possibly be. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> so I meant to show off abuse in this video, and I did, but I also showed off some struggling because I messed up. Well, some struggling. I mean, I kind of won the war, but it, it didn't. It wasn't pretty. Uh, this doesn't really slow me down a whole lot, though, because ultimately I still gotta annex these provinces, and I still have to let this guy finish his colonies before I can do it again, really. I'm gonna suppose I can push colonies around here now and gift them to somebody. If I break uh, Chickasaw loose temporarily, perhaps. They don't have any more allies anymore, right? Yeah, I think we're fine. So yeah, I, I could, once I core Cherokee, drop a few colonies down and let them free and then retake them. And I'll probably do that. Come on, I just want to finish the siege so I can stop this part off. There we go, 100% war score. We are successful. And I am proud of that, because I thought I was dead. Okay, so we'll take full annexation in this case. <laughs> With no CV, we get massive aggressive expansion. Absolutely. Yay! We are taking Cherokee off the map. That's a little more expensive than I would have liked. Huh. The alternative is to not core it and uh, just annex the vassal first at a higher rate than otherwise and then turn the Aztec into a vassal. I guess that could work. Although the revolt risk is going to be a little iffy. Although treating them harshly could work. But before I do that, let's um... Hmm. Actually these things are not overly important. We'll reduce land attrition because that'll help in future wars. But that revolt risk will go down. And I think I should be able to maintain a better military force now. So here's the deal. We're going to want to get rid of mercenaries because they are going to be a bit expensive for us still. Uh, once I'm larger I'll be able to bankroll mercenaries like nothing but for the moment not so much. So we dump mercenaries and we're just going to recruit some units and I will see you guys next time. For now I'm going to be in put down revolt and annex vassal mode. See you then. Me and team signing off.